actually okay recording has started <laughs> so everyone just in case you didn't notice uh, we are broadcasting live on facebook we are also recording this show for uh, youtube any other websites that this might get posted on if you don't want your face seen uh, then i would suggest turning off the webcam if you do have questions later on we will have a segment available for you to ask your questions and uh, we'll keep an eye on the chat for any of those uh, for either myself or any of the guests we're going to be having on the show. So, hello everyone from around the world. Welcome partners and community members alike. On behalf of Monaro and 96 Board, we'd like to welcome you to Open Hours. Uh, this is the place where community meets development. Uh, April 25th, my name is Robert Wolf, Lenaro engineer and community manager for 96 Boards. Uh, I also host this show on a regular basis, 49 episodes strong. We do this every Thursday at 4 p.m. UTC at the end of the countdown. So you can follow this countdown on www.96boards.org forward slash open hours. And feel free to check this out at the beginning of your, of your week. You can add it to your calendar for, for uh, whenever you feel interested. There's little descriptions that show you exactly what we talk about. I'm pretty sure all of you know why you're here. Uh, we have a very special episode in store for you today. We're breaking out of our normal broadcast time to bring you a very special announcement. And I'm gonna get right to it, right? So right now, this marks the official release and availability of the 96 boards high key 960. Uh, and, uh, and, and hold your applause, right? There's a lot more of exciting things coming up. But uh, we are also joined today on this call by several member sites, including Huawei, ArcherMind, LeMaker, and Arm. So. Uh, there's going to be time for everyone, whoever's on the call, to participate in asking uh, these folks, these fellows, questions. I will also, I also brought some questions to the table that we will, uh, that, that we'll kind of throw out there, see what we can get going. But um, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. So this is the first time Open Hours has ever done anything like this, and you know, I'm pretty sure there's some people on the call that participate on a regular basis, right? But first off, I just want to kind of give a little outline of, of our schedule, so what we're going to be doing for the next 40 minutes here on the call. Essentially, first off, introductions. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for being here. It's you know taking time out of your day. It's very nice to have you all here. Very soon, I'm going to push into uh, just basically a section where I'm going to talk about the high key 960. In particular, the, the, the main features, the things that I personally like about it, the stuff that I've picked out, and I'm uh, going to talk about all the various components, uh, upgrades, and, and cool things on the board. And then we're going to compare it to the original, its predecessor, right, the, the original high key. I have both of them here on my desk. Uh, hopefully, we move right into a demo with Vishal. He's uh, Lenaro's own Vishal. He's been working on this board for quite a while now. He's got some pretty cool stuff to show you. Uh, we've been running dry runs, checking this stuff out, so that'll also be very interesting. And then, like I said, it, it, as this all ends, I got some questions. I hope some people here in the audience have some questions, and we'll kind of move on, on into that. Great. So first things first, I have my high key 960 right here. I just kind of want to show but, this. But Sir. Quick one. We are still seeing your screen share. Can you stop that so we can see you? Oh, is that still on? Oh no. Was it on the know. entire time? <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, God. That's okay. All right. So still right here. I have the high key 960. Um, hope you can see that in the camera because I can't see myself. But I mean, this is just a piece of art. It's amazing looking board. Very cool stuff. Um, I'm going to kind of name off some of the interesting things on here. Now it's featuring the Kirin 960 SOC. This is a powerhouse of an SOC. I mean, it's used in flagship phones. And until now, uh, 96 boards has mostly featured low end to mid range, uh, mid range devices, right? So well done on this chip alone. Uh, the CPU is an octa core, which four cores, a uh, Cortex A73 and the other four cores is A53. Big little CPU architecture, which is which which also makes this device very interesting for developers who want to work on hardware that is similar to what ships on real phones. So this is just, I mean, an amazing chip, right? Um, talking about memory and storage. So the memory and storage, this is uh, something that I just love. 32 gigs of UFS storage, so universal flash storage. That's outrageous, right? I mean, just speaking strictly of what you're capable of doing with with eight gigs, I mean, bump that up to 32 gigs. Not only that, UFS storage, much faster than EMMC storage, for those of you who aren't familiar. 
So, uh, you know, most people are probably familiar with the EMMC on current 96 boards. Very cool. Three gigs, LPDDR4 SD RAM, three gigs. I actually have a question later on about that. We'll, we'll address it in a minute. Uh, two USB type A 3.0 ports and something also new to the 96 boards family here. We have the USB type C OTG port. So uh, messing around with that has been a lot of fun. Great. So of course, everything else, right? conforms to the 96 boards specification, the footprint, the standardized uh, input output. That's all very cool. And then the last thing right here, which is the PCIe Gen 2 M2 uh, slot there. So um, hopefully maybe we can talk about this if we get some time as well. All of this information right now has already been pushed live within the last few hours up onto not only 96 boards website, 96boards.org, which I'm hoping Chauvin can share some of these links in just a minute on the, on the chat, but uh, also on our GitHub repository. Uh, and there are several links that you'll find where you are now able to purchase this board. In fact, I was just messaged by Mad Dog not too long ago where he was able to even buy it on Amazon already. So very cool, the maker, Amazon, Archermind, everyone's, um, everyone's getting this going. Excellent. So I kind of, I, I could speak about this board all day. Truly, I really could, but we're going to move along and I have a really cool demo, or I should say Vishal has a very cool demo set up for you. And while we kind of opt him in or maybe give him a cue to start getting ready, I just kind of wanted to give you a little brief overview of what he's going to do. He has two screens set up, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the left will be running the Hikey 960. The one on the right will be running the original Hikey two gigabyte board. And uh, he has them all hooked up to a single power uh, block so he can turn them all off and turn them all on at the same time. So we're going to go through the boot process. You're going to get to see how quickly these boards compare to each other in the boot process. And then we're going to go into opening various media files. So you're going to get to see the comparison in these various media files. So without further ado, uh, Vishal, are, are you there? Yeah, uh, Robert, I'm uh, on the call. Excellent. So I guess we can kind of move into your screen share if you like. Oh, there he uh, is. Yeah, right. sure. yeah. Uh, is my video visible now? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Vishal. Uh, I work as uh, Android engineer uh, in Lunaro, uh, part of uh, the builds and baseline team. Uh, yeah, as Robert uh, has already uh, said about uh, the setup, I have a uh, Hikey 960 hooked up uh, to the uh, left uh, side monitor and uh, uh, the original Hikey connected to the uh, monitor on the right. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're not able to see the uh, both the monitors completely uh, because uh, I want to show some of the numbers which would be visible uh, if I'm close by. Um, to start with, uh, I'll just power it off. Uh, Yeah, uh, I've just powered on both the boards. Uh, this should show how uh, boot time compares on each of the boards. Uh, both of them are running uh, latest ASP master build uh, on them. Let me just power it up and power it up again. Yeah, uh, we we ran through this demo like ten times, didn't we? And it, and, it <laughs> and then the one time you go live, it doesn't work. Kind of, yeah. that's, like, that's traditional, right? Yeah, let's hope. Uh, <laughs> uh, what the yeah, board? There we go. The camera was this to it, Robert. Yeah, uh, you can see uh, Android boot logo came up uh, at pretty much at the same time on both the boards, but. Uh, Hikey 960 booted to home screen much faster uh, compared to the original Hikey, which is still booting. Yeah, uh, finally, both the boards have booted up. Um, as part of the demo, uh, I've installed the uh, same version of VLC on uh, both the boards. Uh, the idea is that uh, both the boards will be playing a couple of media files uh, with software uh, video decoding. 
um, so that we can do the comparison. Uh, I've installed uh, a tool to show the CPU usage. Um, I hope it's visible. Uh, we can see the CPU usage on both of them. Uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, launch VLC. Uh, first, I'll be playing a 1080p 30fps video uh, on both the devices. Uh, uh, let's see how uh, both of them uh, compare in terms of CPU usage. Yeah, I hope it's visible. Uh, yeah, you can see that uh, Hikey 960 is taking around 25% uh, of CPU usage at 500 megahertz, whereas uh, the original Hikey is running at uh, uh, almost one gigahertz uh, with 40% of uh, CPU usage. Uh, this is while it's trying to decode and render uh, uh, 1080p at 30 FPS. Uh, clearly, uh, Hike 960 is uh, doing it much better. Yeah. Uh, next, I'll be playing a 1080p 60fps video um, where uh, Hike 960 is able to do that uh, smoothly. Uh, whereas uh, on the original Hike, you can see uh, there are frame drops and uh, corruptions happening. Uh, in terms of uh, CPU usage, uh, yeah, it's around 50% uh, on the original Hike. Uh, yeah, on Hike 960, uh, yeah, I think uh, the board is kind of, uh, I need to power cycle the board, I guess. Uh, yeah, that is the kind of, uh, yeah, that pretty much summarizes the demo from my end. Awesome, Vishal, thank you very much. Yeah, so for those of you who didn't catch it, it was, it was 30 FPS, uh, 1080p on both of the occasions uh, and, uh, and, um, you saw clipping when it came over to the to the high key, the original high key, whereas the high key 960 was pretty much able to run that flawlessly. So thank you. And if anyone has any questions for Vishal, he'll be here until the end. We can ask if you have any questions you can ask about the demo afterwards. So coming into this next piece of the segment, and if we're on time, we're just about right on time. Uh, I have some questions for some of the sites that are in the in the call right now. Uh, like I had mentioned, we have Huawei, ArcherMind, LeMaker, and Arm in here. And I wanted to kind of phrase some questions to some folks. So the first one, I'm kind of putting out to Huawei and whoever wants to pick this up, it's in the call. Uh, basically, uh, we were hoping to kind of get some broad stroke uh, views or, or um, looks at the differences uh, in, in the chipsets between the Hikey 960 and the Hikey, if that makes any sense. Um, does anyone want to pick that up? Some like you know, some aspects in the sets of uh, in the chipsets that differentiate the two boards. Hi, Robert. This is Hans from Huawei. Hi, Silicon. How are you? Hi. Hello. Great. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, no problem. Uh, it's really a pleasure to support this project. So first of all, if we want to talk about the high key 960 compared to existing uh, high key based on the Kirin 620 assistant chip. The new one uh, has a, a very powerful CPU. It has the most uh, powerful CPU from ARM and also the most powerful GPU from ARM as well. So the, from, from the CPU perspective, we have the uh, Quarko uh, A73 up to 2.3 gigahertz, and also the smaller cores is a Quarko A53 up to 1.8 gigahertz. So it's a big lead architecture. But uh, existing, uh, the, or the first generation high key, is based on the, the octa-core A53. So that's designed for entry level or for the uh, mainstream applications. But for premium devices, you definitely need this powerful platforms. And we also have the Mali uh, G71 MP8. Uh, actually, Huawei Hisica has been the first one to adapt that uh, graphics engine from ARM. It support up to uh, 900 megahertz and has the very high 3D uh, decoding capability up to 3600 mega triangle per second, and uh, also the fill rate up to uh, 2880 megapixel per second. So the performance is so high, it supports the 
about 1470 uh, GFROC, so it's almost 1500 GFROCs. So it's a very high performance uh, GPU platform inside. So like you mentioned, uh, it support the UVS and the or original platform support the EMC, but this one supports 32 gigabyte uh, UVS. And also we uh, double the speed from the, the DRAM, so the DRAM no longer be a bottleneck. So the original uh, DRAM was a uh, uh, one gigabyte or two gigabyte low power DDR3 at 800 megahertz. And this new one supports the three gigabyte low power DDR4 at 1866 megahertz. So it's, it's a very high speed uh, DRAM. And also this new one support a 2.4 and a five gigahertz dual band Wi-Fi and a two USB 3.0 port with a USB type C OTG as well. Okay, pretty much this is the introduction of this chipset. No, that's awesome. Thank you. I mean, I don't know what anyone else on the call is thinking of what they want to do with this board, but I'm already thinking about how I want to build a laptop out of it and create some sort of just mobile development platform take with me everywhere because, I mean, it's just fully capable. Everything's on the board. But um, very, very cool. Thank you for sharing all that. Sure. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping you'll be around to take some questions afterwards uh, if anyone does have any. But so I have... I have another one here uh, for uh, Ray Huang from Arm. If you're on the call, I hope. I didn't really check. Hi, Robert. How are you doing? Hello, Ray. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so well, thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Yeah. So this one was uh, an interesting one. I'm, I'm, I'm glad someone posted this here. But basically, uh, what are the key Arm IPs available in this board? Right. Uh, yeah. So first of all, I mean, uh, you, Robert, you and uh, Hans made a great introduction on the uh, the ARM, you know, key CPU and GPU that is uh, powering the uh, Kirin 960 and this board. Right. But the, uh, let me just go a little deeper on that. So, or well, firstly, I like to say that the ARM is very much committed to delivering the better computing performance and better user experience, you know, uh, to the uh, our partners and to the consumer in the market. Right. So we're uh, looking back. You know, we are, we are actually delivering on our uh, premium CPU, high performance CPU, almost like a yearly cadence. We had the A57 around the two years ago, which was enabling the first uh, ARM version 8 architecture, including the 64 bit computing in the mobile space, right? And then last year, you know, and a year after, we, we had a Cortex A72, which was also powering the uh, flagship smartphone from Huawei, right? And now we have this uh, A73. Uh, with the powering the uh, Kirin 960 that also powers the uh, flagship smartphone like a Mate 9 and a P10 from Huawei. Anyway, so this is Cortex A73 is the latest offering from ARM for the premium mobile CPU that delivers a new level of the performance, right? So compared to the last generation of the Cortex A72, uh, Cortex A73 delivers uh, better power efficiency by 30%. And, you know, what I mean by that is, okay, if you see the uh, mobile computing nowadays, of course, peak performance is really important. Yes, we need to deliver, you know, a better performance for our developers out in the world. However, what is equally important, should I say, is actually the sustained performance, right? Uh, you know, there are many cases that, yeah, you know, there are lack, lots of uh, peak performance, but cannot sustain because of the power consumption or too, too high up, you know, thermal limits, right? And so A73 is actually addressing that problem. So while maintaining the same, you know, uh, performance, actually we, we deliver the power efficiency, better power efficiency by 30%. So that means at the same power level, then A73 can deliver 30% better performance at the moment, you know, at the same time, right? So that is a, uh, you know, very briefly uh, the introduction of the A73. The second point is that the uh, A53, right? Uh, although peak performance is important, but in many use cases, not just the smartphone, uh, but the uh, many other use cases like embedded home, you know, uh, again, like I said uh, previously, sustained performance, battery life is really important as well. And A53 is the much more power efficient uh, CPU that is providing uh, by ARM, right? So it delivers much more power efficiency as well. Um, so combining A73, which is a big CPU, big core, and also with this uh, A53, which is a little core, uh, with a big little processing, we deliver the best of the both worlds, which is peak performance, but at the same time, 
the better better power efficiency a better battery life right so yes uh, we deliver a 73 and a 53 in a big liter uh, processing uh, topology and lastly uh, last but not the least uh, you know I cannot go without saying that the uh, Mali you know Mali GPU the brand new latest uh, GPU uh, that is also powering uh, Kirin 960 so we have a Mali G71 in this board and in this SOC which also delivers like a 20% power uh, better energy efficiency at the same time we, we are actually delivering a 40% better performance density than our previous uh, generation of the GPU graphics so developers can enjoy you know much more you know performance graphic performance with this board than with an SOC so you can find much more detailed information at developers.arm.com you know much more product information and all the necessary tools as well right that developers would need from this board right and then uh, also uh, we have another you know uh, website uh, community that dot arm.com where we have much more blogs where we you know explain much more uh, description about the features and uh, you know much more uh, you know uh, details about this uh, our arm offering right so you can go there and to find more details and lastly my last comment is i'm very thrilled to see this greatest hardware offering is now meeting the greatest software support from Linaro and ISP. I'm really excited to see this. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for joining us. That was a great explanation. I mean, uh, uh, and very thank you for the kind words on on you know everything. This so, in general, um, I mean, it's looking like it's looking like this board is is essentially ideal for anyone that's kind of looking to develop something that's as as, as most similar to. To a phone right that you want to be developing on a phone and uh, i just want to remind everyone that is on the call uh you don't need to memorize what everyone's saying right we are recording uh this will be on youtube and uh, all the links that you just mentioned ray um if you wouldn't mind maybe we can we can get those linked to the video later as well so when when we do push this up on youtube all the links that we're mentioning will be put into the description sure so uh Thanks. of course yeah no thank you um and Ray, hopefully, will still be around too to take questions afterwards. <clears throat> Great. So I'm going to go back to uh, Huawei here because we still have some time. And I had another question on the docket here, saying basically, uh, uh, why why three gigabytes of RAM? So that was kind of asked, and uh, wondering why why you chose three gigabytes of RAM. Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, the thing is, uh, most of the Huawei phones are using the Kirin 960 platform. We'll be using a four gig or even six gig. Uh, for this the development board, we only use the application processor. We're not using the gigabit uh, LTE on it, so it's not really uh, that necessary to have four gigabyte or even you know, higher memory. But we believe three gigabyte should be fair enough for most of the developers and applications. Excellent. Hopefully that satisfies everyone I, I i i'm definitely fine with it I've, I've worked with three gigabytes and it seems to be definitely enough so um looking here i have some more questions now uh, these questions are a little different because it's kind of just i'm kind of winging it and just hoping that someone helps and answers so if you do know the answer we'd love to have you ha have you help out with this but basically this also just popped up in the chat as well and someone i i, I think it was philip uh, he's interested in knowing when there will be a Linux image available for this board. Does anyone have any insight on this? Nada? Maybe someone's talking, but they're muted. <laughs> so from, from, from what I understand is I don't know why we wouldn't have one eventually. Um, I've heard uh, noise basically saying that stay tuned for the, the rest of this season. So hopefully very soon we should have something. Uh, I'm not sure if there's an exact date or anything, but uh, it looks like Yang posted in the chat saying stay tuned sometime in this season. So uh, I'll, I'll kind of take that answer. Um, so the I, next think, one I think Philip's question, I think Philip's question was about mainline Linux. So I think it was related to uh, running the latest kernel, I believe. And uh, that is an ongoing process. So basic support for the Hikey 960 uh, 
several patches have already landed in mainline and uh, more patches are in the queue. There you go. Cool, thank you, Amit. So the next thing is, uh, and, and this would probably be someone who's more familiar with the type C connector on the board, but I experienced some issues while flashing it. And um, I, I, I'm kind of just wondering if there's any limitations to powering the board through the type C connector only. Um, so without using a 96 boards compliant power supply, you plug in the type C connector and the board powers up. Are there any limitations to using that? connector only. And if we don't get answers to these questions, I'll be sure to fish around and bring them to open hours on Thursday. So, uh, you know, we, we won't miss out eventually. Okay, I'm just going to kind of keep going because we'll put these on on layaway for a little bit. Uh, the next one is, are there any current limitations to the high key 960 that you would like to let the people know about? And I think that this would be kind of maybe a question more for the people who were developing the Maybe Vishal, is there anything that you're aware about? Call or Amit Pundir, that's on the call. I'm calling you out. All right. Uh, hi, uh, this is Amit here. So hey. uh, PMIC driver is still not there, so the board gets heat up really quickly. So, so say that one more time, I'm sorry? I'm saying that the board gets heat up very quickly. Uh, the PMIC driver is still not there. So we are working on it, hopefully in next week or, I mean, the solution will land as soon as possible. I mean, that's what we have been told. Okay, great. That's good enough for me. So, um, so I mean, essentially that those were my questions right and we are pretty much right on schedule so i'm going to open up the floor for anyone who would like to speak up and then while while i wait for someone to speak up i'm going to go through questions that are in the chat so i'm going to kind of scroll up here and look down so let's see what we got here availability on amazon before i click does it go to mainline linux we took care of that one Power supply link, that's fine. Amazon link. What is the operating temperature range? So that should have actually been on the documentation sheet. I don't have it pulled up right here. Possible that it's on there. Does anyone know that offhand? It suggests going to the new documentation page uh, on the 96 boards documentation, uh, GitHub repository. I'm, I'm clicking my way there right now, but can find it in just a second. Hopefully it's listed in there. Operating temperature and it is not. So that's something that we'll look up. Hopefully we can find that out for you uh, for the next open hours. And on Thursday, we'll bring that to light. Uh, mm -hmm. Next thing, <clears throat> I would need a DSI touch display that could interface with such a board. <clears throat> Are any available for 96 boards in general? Uh, DSI touch display, that's another question that I think we'll have to talk about on open hours next episode, unless anyone on the call is familiar with a touch display that they've used personally. Um, I have one from WaveShare that I've used that ended up working on several other 96 boards. I have not tested it on this one yet. So uh, WaveShare is also something you can check. Um, <clears throat> how many PCIe lanes are stuck into the M2 slot? Is it full four time four X lanes? Does anyone have that answer? Been some tough ones. Oh, Amit put one time lane. There you go. What's closed source? What's open source? Can the boards be purchased in volume? That's actually a really good question. Maybe the maker wants to pick. Is is anyone from the maker on here? What is the max volume that these boards can be purchased in? I don't think, I think the sky's the limit. Yeah, <laughs> right, put it put it out there, buy, put, put the money out there, you can get as many as you want, I'm pretty sure, not a big deal. Uh, so let's see, uh, Atla Maker and other partners are working with DSI, uh, on DSI as well. Okay, cool, we got that answer from Yang. Tony Zhang, we will send you a five inch display, including, okay, cool. 
Guest 19, is that a question? In addition to the question for mainline Linux support, I personally don't care about immediate. Okay, great. Manny, what was the cold boot time for Android in seconds? Was it measured? Is Vishal, Vishal looks like he's having connection issues, so. Yeah, uh, sorry, Robert, uh, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, oh, no, that's any question? Yeah, someone was asking what the cold boot time was. Did Did you have that measured? Um, I've not actually, I've not measured as such, uh, roughly, I would say it's less than, uh, 10 or 15 seconds. Um, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we've not looked at, uh, optimizing, uh, things at bootloader as such. Um, yeah, it's less than 20 seconds, I guess. Okay. Good enough for me. So From experience, it, it looks like half of the time it takes for Haiki to boot. Exactly half? Yeah, it looks like, because it boots up very fast. Okay. So I, I did notice we have we have LeMaker on the call here. Um, are you guys are you guys able to talk? Did you wanna Hi. Hi, how's it going? Hi, I'm oh, I'm Leo from LeMaker. Okay, sorry for because uh, we don't hear the question very clear. Just no, that's all right. So okay. we're, we're at, I think we're I think we're curious first of all um, of the link that's going up on Amazon, the availability uh, that's going to be happening right off the start. Yeah, so the, the the link on the Amazon will be uh, will be okay yeah, after the launch. We we just uh, we just offshore. The link for, uh, before the after the launch, the link will be okay. Okay. After the so, and Excellent. there will be okay, and there will be four four district in the Japan. There are also a switch sense. They will have the link, and in the Europe, in the all night, and in China, people can from uh, us, and uh, in the United States, on the Amazon. Is from the impression system, okay, and uh, we will release the links after the launch. Okay. okay, so 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 after so tonight it'll be released. The links will all go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. And then someone was asking. Someone was asking the limitations. What are, are there limitations as to how many someone can buy? Are you guys placing limits on that? Yeah, because there are only a very limited number, and the many of them have already been ordered but uh, uh, i think one or two pieces currently is okay and for more pieces maybe later in okay. the future you know after the massive production it will be okay for bigger number okay okay cool awesome thank you very much thank you did you have, did you have anything else you wanted to add Okay, and uh, besides the distributor, we will uh, we'll also provide uh, the uh, customers a lot of different kind of package. For example, the package with the power supply, with the PCIe port board, and uh, with other kinds of uh, uh, other kinds of uh, uh, stuff with the board. We will provide a different kind of package for for the users. Okay. No, that's cool. So, okay. I mean, essentially, there will be some like kits that you're putting together, like custom kits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's cool. Always, always nice to have some kits to choose from. I, I'm, I, I think so. Uh, so Keith, and I think this is Keith from Gumsticks. I, I hope that wasn't throwing you under a bus, but Keith from Gumsticks asks, how is the CSI two camera support? Um, is anyone familiar with that? It, has anyone done any work on the HiKey 960 already uh, around CSI2 camera support? Maybe Amit or Vishal? No? No. Um, we have um, done that. That's still work in progress. There you go. Work in so progress. Camera drivers are still work in progress. Okay. So work in progress. And uh, I, I guarantee you, that if you if you uh, if you keep an eye out on the open hours IRC channel or on the website, uh, we will be posting things when, when important things like this start to surface. You'll start to uh, you'll start to see us updating the pages and letting you know 
so that you can come into the open hour show and, and see these different demos and stuff start popping when stuff starts popping up. Uh, Hans also commented uh, about the temperature range. So uh, it should be between negative 30 Celsius to positive 85 Celsius for whoever asked that question earlier. Uh, so uh, please keep in mind this board uses consumer grade electronics components, no industry military graded for extended temperatures. Uh, details can be seen on the specifications of the board. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that, and this is probably something I should have mentioned, there is a hardware manual. And I, again, I suggest poking around the Hikey 960 documentation. You will find all of this information there. So I definitely suggest that. Uh, Guest 19 asks, is the maximum HDMI screen resolution supported 1080p or can it go up to 4K? Amit, you want to take that one? Amit Pundir? Uh, we have not tried that, uh, but you have been told that once you get the hardware decoder binaries, then there's a possibility that you can do 4K as well. But I, I cannot promise on that. I mean, I have not tried it yet. We have not got the binaries. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, just like Yang. Go ahead. Is someone speaking up there? Anyways, just like Yang mentioned there. So it's uh, not it's not 4K uh, at this point uh, to keep costs on the board down. The SOC itself is capable of 4K, but the board can do 1080p. Okay, great. And uh, yeah, just like Yang had mentioned there, keep an eye on the hardware user manual. Uh, and then on the getting started page, we try to keep it updated with any latest hardware notes. So if there's something that that we come across that we think you should know. The Getting Started page has a little section there dedicated to any notes that we feel uh, should be known right off the bat for any new user or people that are just working with the board. So Tony Yang just says, Amazon link, Lenovator link, Germany all net link, and Japanese switch science will all be available. Great, cool, good to know. So, um, I mean, you know, there's 42 people in the call. Uh, two of them are me, <laughs> but, if uh, if anyone has any more questions, you know, please speak up now because what I'm going to start doing is going into some closing announcements, thanking everyone. It, th does anyone want to get some questions in? We got people from we got people from all over the place in the call right now. I mean, now's your chance to get some stuff answered. Speak on up. I talk I talk too much. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, Twenty seconds. Um, I love the BeagleBone Black. When I was in college, I discovered the BeagleBone Black and like it changed my life. And I started producing um, devices for companies based off that architecture um, and customizing, customizing their schematics and making custom programs for it. And one of the um, pain points for me when dealing with the high-end stuff is that it's really hard to I'm sorry. Let me mute. Let me mute that real quick. Okay. So one uh, of the things for me is moving, being a small person and not having access to business people is like trying to, you know, use the higher end stuff and get access to the tools that I need in order to to produce parts for people. I am in the Y Combinator startup class now, and I have my own product and my own venture, um, and I'm still basically fully involved in like Texas Instruments components, but I'm starting to look. Uh, other brands and seeing if there's some availability to me. So for the 96 board line, like, is this, is this, am I your market? Should I look into this stuff? Should I, should I walk down this road or is this just, uh, you know, something more for somebody who only wants one board and wants to make something to, you know, measure like uh, whether or not they need to water their plants? Yeah. So, I mean, I feel your frustration and I definitely know where you're coming from uh, with, with regards to that. Uh, 96 boards in general has been trying to bridge this gap. We've been trying to kind of eliminate this this ramp up period or, you know, uh, what is it? The learning curve, right? Uh, for people trying to break into these high level or I guess you could say like, you know, more industry high chunky boards, right? And uh, hopefully, hopefully we've kind of gotten closer and closer to doing this. I mean, just talking about this show alone, open hours, allowing access to people, developers, and getting your questions answered. Our forums are, 
are always being watched by everyone and, and anyone who's interested in development. Um, but, uh, you know, there's still a lot we have to learn and there's still a lot everyone has to contribute. And so we're just trying to keep building that up, right? And I, I would suggest, you know, getting your feet wet, get, getting your hands dirty and, and breaking into this this craze because, I mean, 96 boards is growing really fast and you have an opportunity to get in at the ground level, right? So, uh, you know, definitely worth worth trying it out. And, you know, the Hiking 960, you're jumping in at a, at a, at a really nice time, I, I got to say. So I don't, I don't know if that answered your question. I, I don't know so, if I pinned So to add to, add to what Robert said, uh, AJ, um, several of the ski vendors you're working with are actually uh, now uh, making catalog parts available, uh, similar to the Beagle Bone experience that you have. So you, you can order uh, small quantities of SOCs, uh, but it all depends on uh, the SOC vendor. So uh, come to the forums and, and uh, uh, ask, ask around for the boards that you're interested in, and I'm sure you'll find something that uh, um, smaller developers can, can use and, and build their uh, custom boards on top of. Thank you. No, of course. And I mean, uh, as soon as you get your first 96 boards, I suggest, you know, keeping in touch with us on, on open hours. Every every Thursday we do this, uh, you know, take advantage of it, have some fun with us. We brew coffee, have just talk about a bunch of stuff. So now I wanna mention one more thing because we are coming up at the top of the hour and I want to go with this last note. And uh, this is about AOSP, right? So I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with AOSP, but, um, we did finally uh, get the go-ahead to uh, feature the Hikey 960 using uh, AOSP. Now, I'm I'm not sure if uh, if anyone here wants to speak to that, Vishal or or Amit, um, but we did just get the first link put up um, on the website for building from source, and you can pick through that. Let me share that right here. Um, Boom, going through here. I'm sorry, going to find it real quick. So on the source.android.com slash source, you can go check out the high key 960 right there. Um, it's official as uh, one of the devices, one of the, the Android devices there. So um, I don't know, can, can anyone else talk more to this uh, for me? Please? <laughs> no? Okay. That's fine. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would suggest checking, like, again, reading through all the documentation, uh, checking all of this stuff out, fishing through the, the, the AOSP source there with, uh, with the high key 960 as the newest edition, right under the original high keys, right under the original high keys um, uh, uh, instruction set. You can go right down into the Hikey 960, have a whole bunch of fun there, and uh, get building, get developing, uh, get pushing out your your fun projects. And then, uh, of course, call me so that we can uh, talk about it on open hours and have some more fun uh, showing off some cool Hikey 960 stuff. Hello, Robert. Can you hear me? Yang, yes. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Yeah, sorry. I was uh, muted. So, yeah. Oh, there you are. Let... Yeah, I just want to let everybody on the call know that the robot has been um has played down quite a bit <laughs> on the AOSP. So one thing we're really proud to announce today is that Hiking 960 uh, is announced on day one to be supported in AOSP, and it's live on AOSP page uh, in the link which Shovan just pasted. Um, it is upstream is supporting a, a Android Common Kernel uh, from today. And uh, there's a lot of work has been going to make that happen from all parties and high city can ask, uh, working together. And this device is announced in joint effort with Google, uh, Arm, and Hasekan Linaro, and also distributor partner being Archimind and the maker. So that's, uh, that's what I want to say. Thanks. 
Thank you, Yang. And yes, that is that is big news. So uh, thank you for for bringing that up. Um, great. Well, I think that covers everything. Uh, people are still joining. I don't know why, but uh, essentially, there we go. All set. I'm going to stick around for a little bit after the show. For anyone else who's interested in just kind of hanging out and chit chatting a little bit more about the board, I can talk to you about some of my experiences so far. If anyone else sticks around, maybe they could have some stuff to share. Uh, we will stop the recording in just a second, but I will leave you with one last thing. Uh, please uh, check out our, our uh, YouTube channel at 96 boards, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash 96 boards. And make sure you uh, check out 96 boards.org forward slash open hours. Tune in every week, Thursday. We address all sorts of fun, cool stuff. Have lots of fun here. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah. So big thank you to everyone on the call, everyone who joined us from all of the sites all around the world. Very grateful here. Uh, 96 Boards Open Hours and Lenaro, thanks you very much for joining us. Community members, everyone. Uh, so please stick around uh, and chit chat off the recording. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Is anyone